that then leads into talking a little bit more about exercise um, as a whole. And uh, should the core be trained isometrically if I've got my questions up here, so I'll, I'll be looking up here just to review them. So should the core be trained isometrically without movement or dynamically with movement? So isometric exercises are static exercises. An isometric exercise you would have possibly done before, a plank, a side plank, a bridge, something to that effect. So should we be doing it isometrically or statically or should we be doing it dynamically? We should be doing both. And there are... Um, physiological benefits and psychological benefits of that or physical benefits and mental benefits from that um, which I will explain and there is sort of a um, a structure and a, a strategy and a way of progressing which we'll talk a little bit more about um, in another question but essentially we start isometrically and then move into dynamic why do we start isometrically for the very simple reasons they're simple exercises. Why do we want to do simple exercises? Because we don't want to be thinking about too many parts of the body because a beginner's brain doesn't have the bandwidth. When I work with people in a gym, I will often ask people, where did you feel that working? And if we've done a big movement, fast movement, they will probably say, I was just trying to get the weight from where it started to where you want it, wanted it to me to get it. Which tells me all they're focused on is weight going from A to B. They're not thinking about how is my body actually doing this? What is the position of my spine? What is the, the position of the hip? What is my knee doing? How am I turning on my foot? What are my shoulders doing through that? How are my hands on the handle or whatever? They're not thinking about all of that. They're just thinking weight A, up into B and how that gets there as long as the weight gets there I'm good now if we start with isometric exercises very simple exercises takes a little bit of bandwidth not a lot of mental processing to think okay this muscle's working and I can feel it there everything else is completely static as we then move up we would then add bits of movement into that okay we might move a limb okay so I can think okay my I can feel my torso muscles working and as I move my limb, I can focus on just moving the limb and not my spine. So we've got that element to it. Then, once we've got one limb moving, let's move two limbs. Then we might move to three limbs and four limbs. So what you're doing there is not only are you building it the physical capacity, but you're also building the mental capacity. And what I also find is even advanced people, where they have the physical capacity to do it, they don't necessarily have the mental capacity to do it. Because again, I can ask them, where did you feel that working? It's like, don't know. I was just getting the heaviest weight possible from A up into B. And again, where that will look impressive on the outside, it's not necessarily impressive on the inside, if that makes sense. Because the mental processing of how it gets there isn't very fine-tuned. They're just looking at the result and not the process. Whereas we want the process and the result. So should you train isometrically with, uh, without movement and dynamically with it, it's both. But it's more advantageous to start isometrically, build the physical and mental capacity, and then make it more dynamic where you require more physical and mental capacity. And then that will grow as well. So is there a recommended order or progression for core training? Well, I've sort of highlighted it um, in the previous question. And essentially, it's start isometrically. So start with the plank the side plank, the bridge. Again, these are my four fundamental work, uh, uh, four fundamental exercises. Plank, side plank, bird dog, bridge. They're the four ones. If someone comes to see me and they've got no experience in the gym, I will start them doing those four exercises. Yes, there will be more, but essentially I want those four exercises. And the reason I want those four exercises is because I want them to feel all the different areas of the core working. So I want them to feel the anterior musculature from the plank, the lateral musculature, from the side plank, the posterior musculature from the bridge, and then in some respects sort of all of that together with a small amount of movement in a very controlled environment with the bird dog. So we start with these very simple exercises. Yes, we can add, depending on the goals of the person, presses, pulls, lower body exercises, lunges, all these different types. Yes, we can add those. But what I want to get from them first is 
is your core working and can you tell that your core is working? So we wanna build that first. Then we wanna start adding greater strength, endurance and stability into that. So for example, in a plank, I will get people to then start lifting one arm from the floor. And in a side plank, one leg from the floor. And in a bridge, again, one leg from the floor. The reason I want that is because I want um, them to maintain position of the hips, which shows good stability. Once I've got them to that point, it's then starting to wrap in certain movements. So chopping movements from high to low, chopping movements from low to high. Then we can start to bring in um, speed type exercises. So again, it can be sort of throwing of a medicine ball, again, from low to high, from just horizontal, parallel to the floor, or low to high, whatever it may be. But again, we build that in layers. So we start isometrically, then we start adding movement in, then we start adding speed with that movement. Because what we're trying to do is train everything that I've talked about so far, well, if you think back to the function of the core, we're trying to not only build the, um, the capacity of the muscles to contract, but also to tune the, um, the timing of the core. So when they throw, are they engaging the core at the right time, at the start of the movement? Are they then slowing the weight down and stopping the movement? So again, you can sort of understand that there's different parts to this um, this movement where we've got to accelerate and decelerate and then re-accelerate exercises. So we're trying to build all of that, but that doesn't come to the later stages. We wouldn't do that nearer the beginning. That would come later on. So we have to understand all these different things um, to be able to, um, to sort of build someone's core because I'm not trying to build someone's core strengths, core stability, core endurance. I'm trying to build it all because I want a good quality core when it's exercising because then it protects the spine as best as it can be protected. So do you need direct core training? Um, with regards to direct core training of planks, side planks, bridges, so isometric exercises, yes. When it comes to sit-ups, crunches, back extensions, um, side bends, Russian twists, all these different things, no. And the reason for that goes back to what's the function of the core? Is to prevent movement. So if we're using exercises that produce movement of the core, then essentially they are null and void because they're kind of going against what the core is designed to do. And even in, remember, we go back to that sporting movement where the spine can flex, it can rotate. We aren't producing the movement at the spine. We're producing the movement at the hips and the shoulders. So even then, we don't need the abdominals to flex the spine. We want the core to contract at the right time. So it's a very different, it's a different perception. A lot of people don't, they haven't wrapped their head around it, which is why the disagreement's there. So when people disagree with a point like that, it's because they don't understand the um, they don't understand the function of the core. Because as soon as you understand the function of the core, it becomes very clear how the core works and the exercises you choose for it. And essentially, a lot of the movement producing exercises just get put to the side. It's like, well, what's the point in doing them? Because they they don't really do anything. So we have to understand it in that way. But you once once that concept of preventing movement and producing movement is understood, so producing movement of the limb and preventing movement of the torso is understood, it starts to make a bit more sense. Because then you can differentiate between exercise in the gym and sport and everyday movement. You can understand where the torso sits within all of them and what's required within all of them to be able to perform it correctly, if that makes sense. So do you need direct core training? If it's isometric exercises, yes. If it's movement producing or spine bending exercises, it's no.